Hello, this is Barb from Taproot. Did you know that the Taproot Root Cause Tree is a great tool for preparing for an incident investigation interview? I have a quick example and tip for you today. Let's say you suspect an operator fell asleep monitoring instruments because he failed to shut down a water treatment unit after the indicators clearly displayed that there was a temperature issue. So, you're left wondering, why did the operator, who was assigned to mon monitor these instruments, miss that important reading? And I've put a snap chart together here and I've indicated that I think the operator was sleeping. That's my hypothesis. But we know if we don't know this for a fact, we put a dotted line around it on the snap chart to indicate that we haven't proven this to be a fact. So to get ready to interview this operator, I'll take a look at the root cause tree. And I've opened the root cause tree up and I want to look specifically at the 15 questions because question number one deals with fatigue. So to prepare for this interview, I can look through these questions because this is like having our human factors expert right there beside us to help us think of good questions and good places to probe during the interview. And I can look down through these questions in the dictionary and see if I can come up with some new ideas. Like, um, do the hours assigned to the worker violate laws or industry standards? If I want to find this out, I'll click this plus sign and this question will go over to the drop zone on my snap chart. Maybe I want to know if this person is sleep deprived. Maybe I'll ask some questions around that. Uh, maybe I want to know if the job was even designed on uh, question number 12 so that the average worker normally or frequently becomes bored or stops monitoring key indicators. I can take a look at that. Um, other questions I might consider are where there's so many alarms or signals that the person could not see or interpret them. I'll bring that over to my drop zone. There's just a lot of valuable information here that I might not think to ask during an interview. Um, look at number 17. Was the person reacting as fast as possible but still unable to keep up with the pace of new signals, control actions, or other required responses. So there are a lot of things to consider here, not um, just going into the interview with the mindset that this worker must have fallen asleep. There could be other reasons that they missed this uh, important indicator, that they missed the signal, and we don't want to go in there with the biased opinion that Oh, well, this worker is asleep. This is, um, it's not always the issue that an operator was willfully disregarding a policy for no sleep. There could be other things going on there. And you can see I come up with a lot in just a few seconds, came up with all of these other things to think about. So I just wanted to share this quick tip with you today that before you go into an investigative interview, Take a look at your 15 questions, open up your dictionary, and see if it gives you some more ideas on collecting some better information to add to your snap chart for your investigation. I hope this tip's been helpful today. Thanks for joining me. And um, if you're interested in more things about evidence collection and investigative interviewing, I'll add some of our upcoming courses below this short video and I hope to see you there. Thank you.